Well, Dave Rubin, host of The Rubin Report, once called himself a progressive and even worked for a progressive news outlet. Now he says he's fed up with the modern left's autocratic tendencies and cannot endorse them anymore. Dave Rubin joins us from Los Angeles. Dave, thanks a lot for coming on. I, I wanted to have you on after I saw this yeah. amazing uh, video that you did that did go viral explaining why you're at least shifting. I don't know if you're abandoning all your former beliefs, but you're reorienting for sure. Could you just basically sum up what happened, why you changed your mind? Yeah, well, you know, first off, actually, I believe the same liberal principles that I've believed probably since around 1988 when Michael Dukakis was running against George H.W. Bush, and I was in a, a social studies class where we were having a mock election, and I thought liberal was good. I mean, the, the issue that, that everybody's talking about, and by the way, I'm glad that I'm doing this tonight and, and with you because you're one of the few people in the mainstream that are, that are now talking about this. Uh, it's been bubbling up online for quite some time. And the, the progressive movement is no longer progressive. What progressive would be would be truly liberal, meaning for the individual, not for the collective, for liberty. I, right. I would welcome all your viewers to, to Google what classical liberalism is. It's about the individual and your right to, to do with your life what you would like. Uh, this is not what the modern left is about. So I actually believe the same exact things that I've believed probably for the last 30 some odd years. Uh, and it, it's the left that has gone crazy and, you know, I know you know this, but of course on all this free speech stuff and, and judging yes. everybody on their immutable characteristics. So if you're black, we judge you this way. And if you leave the group think you, you're a traitor, if you're Muslim, if you're trans, gay, et cetera, et cetera, th these are reverse of liberal beliefs. And uh, it's been very sad to see this. I, I've been trying to fight this on my show for, for a good two years now. And I, I suspect we've lost that war and that I've lost the left. But I, I see an incredible new center developing where people that are liberal are now lining up and going, wait a minute, I, I see a libertarian who can come to the same right. agreement that I have. We can believe the same things just looking at it through a different political lens. So there's a beautiful moment happening here. But of course, it's lost in, in a big mess of, of free speech craziness and authoritarian nonsense. Right. And, and, and part of the agreement that might bring people who disagree with each other together is that we're not going to use the legal system against each other if we can help it. So you had this line in here that struck out, stuck out at me. You said, I am gay and married. I do not believe that a baker or a florist or any business person ought to be forced to bake a cake for a gay wedding because if the government can force a company to do something for one set of ideals, they can do it for any. So you see this as a threat to you, potentially. Well, of course. I mean, look, you know, I should lay out, you know, I'm on Fox News and I know people will freak out. Oh, my God, a liberal's on Fox News. So I, I should give you some liberal cred. Look, I'm for gay marriage. I even married a guy. I'm, right. I'm for legalizing marijuana. I'm pro-choice. I'm for reforming the prison system. And the list goes on and on. As for that specific line, I personally wouldn't want the government telling a private business what to do. Now, a lot of people will say, well, yeah. wait a minute, that, sound, that sounds libertarian. You just want small government libertarianism. Again, this is actually a liberal principle, and I think this is something that most people actually believe. And I know there's a lot of good people that would argue with me and say, well, what if you live in a small town and, and you, know, you have a, a bigot is your baker in that one town? Unfortunately, right. I think this is a case where you have to use your foot vote. You have to then take your skills and your family and the money that you bring to the community and move somewhere else or order a cake online. And I know that that doesn't feel right to a lot of people, but that, no, that I... in and of itself, this, this one person's bigotry shouldn't uh, be an excuse for more government overreach. And again, that is a That's liberal right. principle, believe it or not. Yeah. It is, to, to the extent possible, you know, and there are cases where you have to, but try not to bother other people too much. <laughs> that's, that's one way to put well, it. Well, that, 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 yeah. that's the funny yeah. thing, that uh, live and let live is a liberal principle. And what I've yes, now I found know. over the last couple of years, especially, is that defending my liberal principles has become a conservative position. So I find I it easy suddenly to build bridges with, with people that you know, like uh, Glenn Beck and Dennis Prager and Ben Shapiro, that are looking to go, wait a minute, maybe we can find some common ground with liberals. And I try to find, I often invite a lot of leftists on my show or progressives, and I get blocked or muted or you know, otherwise uh, rejected. But I have had some too, and I, and I welcome those conversations. Tell me about it. I, I know the feeling. Yeah, I, I, would, think, I, would I think we're probably on the same road on that. Yeah, we, we are on that. To, to look up your video online, it's, it's absolutely worth seeing. Thanks a lot, Dave. I appreciate it.